Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. In the year 247, in the age of judges, Vartan was summoned home by a letter stating that his father had died under mysterious circumstances. Upon returning home, Vartan opened his mind that the possibility that his father's death in his hometown of Eterno was not everything that it appeared to be. Welcome to Ethereal Embrace. I'm Ovik. I help people cross over to the realm of the dead. It's not a glorious job, but I'm here to serve my god. And if you're curious, most people do defecate upon death. People are gross. Day 2. Morning. The Last Stop Tavern. So you're just wrapping up breakfast, or brunch, or whatever, with Magno Odd at the... In she ate two a uh, couple mushrooms. Yeah, she stole a couple mushrooms. Were they raw mushrooms or were they like breaded? They were breaded. They were like deep fried mushrooms. Dip them in some ranch. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> All right. Anything you guys? Anything else you guys want to do in here, or finish up breakfast and move along? Yeah. I th- no, I think that I I'm think that's it. Uh, bid Magno farewell. So. You eat a lot more of the food. Magno makes a couple quick comments about, that is impressive. Look how much food you ate. Uh, But she bids you farewell and uh, says, maybe I'll see you guys out there tonight if you guys decide to pick up a shift of guard duty or two. I I look forward to working with you if that's the case. And gives you a quick bow. Like a quick, just not a nod of the head. Yeah, be seeing you around. And Cody doesn't really say anything as you guys leave. He just... Does the chin lift the, you know. Yeah, I'll just silently silently wave. Bio would say, thank you so much for the lovely service. You've been wonderful. Um, totally appreciate it. Everything was great. Thank you. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your night. And, and then, and then we, where did you guys go? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that we wanted to go um, to see, was it Terraniel? Or did we want to go see the... Uh, the judge. The judge. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm thinking the judge. Yeah, I know. I know that uh, at some point Vartan wanted to meet up with the dude that took over for the guard, but yeah, not yet. that's definitely not yeah. top priority. Um, the judge wanted to see us, or wanted to see me, to uh, talk about the estate and what's going on. I think that would be a good yeah, idea. Yeah, we go there next. Yeah. The judge's office is right in the center or near the center of town. It is got it, it has a perfect wide open window that can see the market area where people come to sell their wares. Uh right across from the judge's office is the bricks. The bricks is a group of brick buildings that have like it's where all the the like the baker is there, the carpenter is there, the tailor is there, the arcanist is there, the apothecary, and the blacksmith. So they're all kind of the the buildings where people work that aren't farm-related, um, that do specific jobs and, and hire more people. So the Bricks is a little little chunk of town that is the business industry. 
and the judge's office is right across from that where it can see the bricks, it can see the market area, and it's right next door to the city guard. Um, so you can you can walk through it. The city is now picking up. There's more people walking around. Make a perception check as you guys walk through town to the judge's office. I got a 17. I got a 17. I guess I should roll my dice, huh? Uh, Baya, do you get a 17 as uh, well? Baya gets a 14. <laughs> a 14. Yeah. Okay, so so you all do start to get the same interesting perspective. As you look around, people are busying themselves about and doing things, but you don't see any children running around like you would maybe assume that you would see running around town. Uh, they're... There does not appear to be any playing in the market area. There's none playing in Old District or uh, in, in the bricks. There's just no street scamps scamping around. But yeah, so just something that you guys notice in passing as you make your way to the judge's office. This is a... Um, so it's a very, like, ghost towny seeming? Or do we see actual people as well? I think there's adults doing stuff. Okay. But no kids. There's adults. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Just no children. Okay. Yep. Now, when yep. I was here 10 years ago, there was definitely children, right? When you were here 10 years ago, there were, you can remember, maybe three or four children altogether in the town. And, okay. and this town is... It's small. Yeah. I mean, it's small, but there are, in the town... You remember from from your father's business here, you remember your father owned some of the buildings here in town. And some of them are empty, but there are 41 houses with people living in them. Uh, so it, it even though it's a small town, uh, there's that that's a lot of people residing in homes. And it's odd that they don't have children. Yeah. But there's no but children. He, yeah. Yeah, even when you were a kid, thinking back on it, there's still, I mean, there wasn't a lot of children in town. Just a, just a handful. Yeah, well, I mean, it was hundreds of years um, ago, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but out, out, of hundred, out, of, out of over a hundred years, there was definitely children in this town. Mm-hmm. All right cool so you get to the judge's office he's chilling behind his desk it's got a wide open pretty much wide open window view of of the marketplace and the bricks and and part of old town or old district and he sees you approaching so he gets up before you even get to the the door and goes to the door and opens it for you to welcome you inside come on in you're, of course, welcome. Please, please, come on in. Would you... After y'all. Yeah. Um, maybe somebody... This is probably going to be a little hard. Um, maybe... Ovik, you knew his father, right? You were there for his pass. You were there to help him pass. Would you... That's why I'm here. I unfortunately wasn't around when he passed. So I was not able to do what I was summoned to do, but yes, I knew Kyrian. Um, maybe you can help us kind of navigate this. You knew him, you knew what he was going through at the time. Um, I think I assume that we're coming here to talk about the estates, yeah? Yeah, that's what Greystone said, but I have no knowledge on his will or what he wanted done. We never talked about what would happen after he died, and I didn't tell him why I was here. As far as he knew, I was just a traveler passing through and ended up staying and spending time with him. Uh, I would, I didn't tell him, hey, I'm here to help you cross <laughs> over when you die. It probably wouldn't have went super well. <laughs> Understandable. Um, well... Do do you feel comfortable doing this, Vartan? Is this something that you're ready to do? Yeah, I think so. I mean, hell, I got got the help of y'all. Maybe, maybe your purpose here, Ovik, is is uh, to help find out uh, why he died. 
I would like to know how he died and exactly what happened. It was not my god's plan for him to die alone in the woods. Okay. Yeah, let's get some answers. Get some answers. So, uh, okay. Judge Greystone. Yeah, so you, you guys had this conversation as you were walking up. Mm-hmm. So he opens the door, and then you're having this this conversation as, as you're walking mm-hmm. up. And just as you hit the, the door, you, that's where you, the Judge Greystone. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. After y'all. And he says, uh, come in. Please have a seat. There are only two chairs in front of his desk and then his chair behind the desk. So he motions to it as he says, have a seat, and then goes and sits behind his desk. Again, wearing very common clothes for, for a judge. But but yeah. Baya will How big are these chairs? I'll stand by the door and let Baya and Vartan sit down. All right, yeah. We'll sit down. Chair big chair's big enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, chair, the, chair's, <laughs> the chair's big. The the office is kind of small though. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, he he's a human man. It's it's a bit big for him, but it's, you know, you you did duck your head to walk through the door. All right. But yeah, once you're sitting down, you you've got a good nice chair. Okay, nice cool, cool. Bye is going to put her hand on uh Vartan's shoulder and sit down and say I'm here when you if you need anything, just give me an eye. Greystone says Again, I, I would like to offer you my deepest condolences. Your father was a very good friend of mine, and we had known each other and worked together for the benefit of the town for a very long time. I I know you must feel very sad, but believe me when I say he will be missed from all who live in Eterno. Yeah, he's a good man. Um, so what happened? Well... I don't mean to upset you, and I hope that this doesn't, but he was found out in the woods, away from away from the properties, away from here in town, in a cabin that we really didn't even know existed out there. And his body was found and recovered by... Well, you remember Terra Neal Fallen Cloud, right? The farmer? Yeah. The cabin is one that's well off his property. He, I guess, was out hunting and and saw the cabin wide open and went inside to investigate and found found your father's body there. And he carried Kyrian through the woods for a little bit before he was too exhausted, then came and got help. Uh, unfortunately, we, we could not wait for you to arrive before doing the burial ceremony. So he is he is buried, but we wanted to wait to have his wake until you had arrived and then cover the will with you in private. Oh. Did anybody go investigate that that cabin? Uh the city guard, uh Brass Kane, went with a few of his men to invest investigate the cabin. As the judge here it it is still undetermined what caused his death but there have been some disturbances in the city since then and I am working really hard to verify that his death is not related to these recent disturbances so you didn't have any of these disturbances before his death correct and did they find like I know they didn't find out what killed him but was anything found inside the cabin? The doors and walls were damaged from something that appeared to be breaking into the cabin to get at him. And there were dark red stains of your father's blood on, on the walls and accompanied with the stains were scratch marks as well as on the walls they were on the ceiling and Inside the cabin, there was some camping gear and some scrolls that we found there. Maybe you could take a look at them. We gave them over to Priest Bastille, who's in town, for review. He's looking at them right now. Um, But you, you could go back to the temple and take a look at them. Maybe you could identify them. Maybe you know your father's works better. And then there was also a book that we that we found there that was interesting um 
Let me, let me, uh, let me get that book for you. And he stands up and moves over to his bookshelf. It's just a small bookshelf, not like one of the fancy ones that Kyrian had. But he grabs the book from the shelf and, and holds it out to you, Vartan, and says, it's an interesting journal. It, it talks about the psychology of children in developing them. And I think it's something that your father was working on. I don't know much about it, but it's worth looking into. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right, I'm gonna take the 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 journal. I'm gonna say. So, uh, speaking of children, on the way over here, I mean, it seems like the town's going about its normal everyday business, but where the hell's the children at? Like, I didn't see any children in the street. Like, at least there's always at least some children. Oh, yes, that makes <laughs> that makes sense. The children have recently been playing at someone's homes. We don't have a lot of children here in Eternal right now anyway. There are only three that can be spoken of. There's Mia, who's one of the farmer's daughter. Timurin, his daughter. Uh, there's Tracer, which is the, the baker's daughter. Um, Mikhail and Vale. And then there's Bridger, which is the son of the carpenters. Aang and Marcellus. And... Those are the only three children that we've got. But right now, I believe that they are all over at Timurin's farm playing together. Because of the recent attacks on the city, we have asked the children to stay out of the streets for their own protections. All right, that makes sense. Uh, I just found it a little bit odd, but uh, yeah, this isn't the first I heard of things being off around here. Yeah, and, and they're all, I mean, you haven't been here in the better part of a decade, right? So yeah. I, I don't think you've met these children before. Oh, yeah, of course. I don't know. What do you, what do you all think of this? I guess uh, Baya would look at Vartan and say, your father was, what was it, researching children? How to raise how to raise them? Is that what that was? He was saying, raise them. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, I'm not fully understanding this. This uh, how to raise children. Uh, I mean, obviously, you read the book. Like, what? What did you get from it? I'm going to be honest with you. I browse the book. There have been so many things going on here. I I really don't know the details of the book in question. I, I do know that it is about children, but whether or not they, you know, it, it's about how to raise them, I, I, I'm really not sure. I would suggest you maybe read it if you get some spare time. Well, yeah, of course. And go ahead and make. This is a weird. An insight roll. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna. I got a question for him as well. Do you want us all to make insight rolls? Yeah, all of you make an insight roll. Sorry. 19. 20. I got a 10. Okay, so, I mean, 19, 20. You guys get it. You yeah. you can tell that he definitely seems like he is. he has read the book, and he just does not want to discuss whatever the contents of the book are with you. Like, he, he is seems like he's happy to get the book out of his house and does not want to discuss the details of this with you by any means. Not, and I rolled a 10, so I'm pretty pretty ignorant to it. Yeah. Right? Right. Yep. Yep. Hold on a second. I can tell you've read this book. Why don't you want to answer our questions about what this book is about? His facial expression kind of changes. He kind of kind of scrunches his eyes at you, like his demeanor changes. but Or scrunches his eyes at Vartan. He, he keeps his eyes on Vartan. Says... I'm not sure what your father was into and I'm afraid what this investigation might come up with. We have not had anything bad happen to the children and thank Greyhawk that nothing has happened to them. But I think your father was a little bit obsessed with the fact that you left Eterno and maybe the fact that you left on such a bad note played a Role into the research that he began on the psychology of children. I'm sorry I don't have more details on that. He was working on this project without my knowing until very recently when I found the body. Maybe he was just trying to figure out why you left. 
Maybe he thought it was something other than you just needing to do your own thing. And maybe he was using the other children just to figure out how kids' minds work. I mean, I was far from a child when I left. Something doesn't quite feel right here. Um, yeah. You know, just the way yeah, that he just the way that he described the book seemed a little off. Uh, the fact that he's lying about reading the book seems very weird. Um, his wanting nothing to do with this book is also uh, very concerning. Maybe he's dealing with a lot. I mean, how close was he to your father? They were close. They were close. So you you do know Vartan that they did kind of run the city together. Your father owned several of the properties here, and mm-hmm. he let them. He let people live in his properties for free. Like he didn't charge them to live there. He he more or less had enough wealth, residual wealth, to give free housing to the poorer families in town. But even the poorer families were were wealthy enough. Like everybody kind of did their share. So it was a very communal town when it came to stuff like that. Um, so you you don't remember exactly how many properties he owned, but you do know that. Um, that he worked very closely with the judge and your father was in a place of power before the judge even became the judge of this town. All right. Did he sit back down after giving me the book? Yeah, he did. Yeah. See, I don't know. Something, something's not adding up here. I know you were close with my father. When did he start acting weird? When was he disappearing in from his business for a while? Uh, where was he going periods of time where you didn't see him? Uh, I, I feel like you're holding something back from me. I am only holding back my assumptions about the case and only because I do not want to say incorrectly or suggest things that might not be true about your father. Again, make another insight roll. 21. I got an 8. 19. Okay, so again... Ovik and Baya, you get the feeling that he is being honest in what he's saying, but still holding stuff like only partially true. He's not giving you all the details. Um, Baya is going to stand up, put her hands on Vartan's shoulders and um, say, is it is it possible that your friendship with the um, Kyrian uh, is kind of holding you back from sharing pertinent information from from what's going on. I mean, it must be hard. He was your buddy, right? He was your friend. Right, have you been doing okay since his passing? It's It's been rough. It has really been rough. I imagine. And I am curious specifically, Vartan, of what your intentions are here in town. Are you looking to fill your father's role as a leader in this town, or are you just passing through to take care of his estate and then be along your way? <clears throat> Baya will at this point say, I'm sorry, but we were discussing a different matter. You know, how are or how are you? I know that you want to speak about Kyrian and this relationship but what about Kyrian and your relationship can we go back to that Kyrian left a gap that I need to have filled not only as a friend but also as a leader in the city and right now I'm dealing with a fear in the city from these attacks that are happening from these creatures that are attacking from these people who have gone missing these people who have been injured and I'm at a loss right now, and I've never been more confused and or frustrated than what I am today. So more than just attacks, there's also people missing? When the attacks started, we discovered it because they were attacking people, and then people would go missing. Uh, I, I, we assumed that they were pulling people that were outside the city or a- along the outskirts of the city and taking them away. I would invite you to come look at the guards, the city guard with me. We might have something to show you. Interesting. Baya would then at that point go reach um, over to the judge and 
just squeeze his shoulder as well. Must be hard. He looks down at his shoulder as you do it, and you feel him. You you like you can see his whole body, kind of releases energy. Kind of was stiff, but softens. His shoulders soften. His posture is a little bit more relaxed. You can tell he's kind of putting his guard down a little bit more. Make a because you're still trying to get more information out of him, right? Right. Right. Okay, make a persuasion check. Ooh, I'm good at that. 27. <laughs> Damn. Oh, nice. Jesus. Um All right, give me a second cuz that's a really good roll, yeah. but I don't want to just say, "But here's the campaign." Yeah, I rolled a 19. <laughs> okay. He says, "Vartan, your father was a good man, but I honestly think he has some kind of connection with these monsters that are attacking this town. And if your father knew that his actions had cost the lives of some of the the city folk, he would be devastated. I do not mean to put this on you or to blame your father, and I do not want this getting out. There are only, there's only one other person that shares my concerns with me. It's the farmer, Timurin, Timurin Windcurl. We've discussed this at great length. You know Timurin Windcurl? as one of the two major farmers and he's a halfling man. He's got a daughter named Mia Wincurl. That's one of the, what they had said earlier. One of the three children is Mia. So, you know, new father, but he, he's an older halfling, much, much older, but has always been super nice. He worked with your father a lot, did a lot of business with your father and your father's office and, and made a lot of agricultural decisions for the community. In fact, Timurin, employs a good chunk of the citizens of the city at his farms. And, you know, any anytime there's like a bad season or anything like that, he's always super giving, very kind. So it makes sense to you that that your father would work closely with Timurin, who's the number one employer, and with Judge uh, Greystone, who is the guy who is the lawmaker. And your father is like, the the rich guy or was the rich guy on campus if those things make sense yeah well see i mean i've known you my nearly my entire life and i mean i i felt like felt like you could talk to me i understand a lot's going on here but i wouldn't have come back here as fast as i did if I had somewhere else to be. I understand. Here, l- let me apologize for my guarded behavior. And l- let's get this part out of the way at least. And and then I can help you or you can help me figure this out. Whatever path we want to take from here. But let let me get you this. Your father left it for you. And he reaches into a drawer and uses a key off his, or he, he, yeah, he uses a key off his belt to unlock a drawer, pulls it open, and pulls out a box that he sets on the table in front of you and says, your father by default left all of his property to you, his house, his barns, those, those things. He also left the deeds to these seven other homes for you. And he pulls them out of the drawer as well and sets them on top of the box. And he says, and then he wanted you to specifically have the items in this box. I do not know what they are. I did not look. He said that the key would be in his office at home. And I did not go through his office when he passed. I left that up to you as his heir. All right. As far as the book about the children, I th- I think your father is trying to find a way to make the children stay. He doesn't want them to leave Eterno. And I think he was just projecting his own feelings for you as his child on these other children in the town and wanted to create an environment where they felt like they didn't need to leave. And then he finally closes the drawer and like fully just relaxes into the chair. Like he's gotten everything off his chest. 
All right. Um, I appreciate you open up, opening up to us. Um, Baya gives him a hug. Oh, uh, the judge. And a pat. A, yeah, the judge. And a pat on the shoulder. You know, like a hug where you like pat on the, you know, upper shoulder. Right, right. Mm. This must be, this must be hard for you, <laughs> as I'm sure it's hard for everyone in the town. Thank you for uh, sharing this. Should probably look into what's going on with the town. We don't want what happened to Kyrian to happen to anyone else. And if Kyrian is involved, we don't want his name spread in this way, in this manner. We need to figure out what happened. Greystone stands up and says, let's go to the city guard. I think now would be a good time for you to get a real idea of what's been happening in this town. And starts to move around his desk. <laughs> All right. I'm going to follow, yeah. him, follow him out. Thank you for listening to this episode of Ethereal Embrace and a Fool's Quest production. Vartan the Furbog Fighter is voiced and played by Adam Culbertson. Baya Rustin, the half-elf sorcerer, is voiced and played by Tisha. Ovik, the tiefling cleric, is voiced and played by Chris Johnson. And I am Nico, your GM. Please remember to drop us a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcatcher. Music provided in part by Midnight Syndicate, makers of the original Dungeons & Dragons soundtrack. If you would like to follow us on social media or say hello to the cast, details on where to find us will be in this episode's notes. Remember, be safe, we love you all, and stay foolish.